because in this video I am going to show you how to create a woven chain fence okay also as some of you asked before I am going to show you how I render at the end of this video and in order to make it even more interesting I decided to use an online service and use a way way stronger PC to render and compare it with my own four core PC so one PC has 32 cores and my PC has four cores and I'm going to render it on both PCs and compare the time. So stay tuned, watch to the end, like this video, I'm out! <laughs> Nailed it! Alright fellas, when I saw this first, I didn't know how complicated it could be. I have to be honest, I spent 40 minutes to come up with the right pattern because the first thing you need to do as a CAD modeler whether it's SOLIDWORKS or any other CAD software for that matter when you face a challenge like that when you see a pattern a repetitive pattern like this one first task you need to do is to do a pattern recognition and break down that pattern to its smallest segment so of course it's being repeated and you need to find the smallest segment that is being repeated first of all I was not looking at a 3d model I just googled it and was looking at a 2d picture from the front which was the biggest mistake I made I had to look at it a little bit from the side maybe isometric so I could understand the geometry a little bit better the approach you are looking at right now is what I did take first so I figured it would be much faster and I would save more time if I started with one half of the segment and then I used mirror entities and the other features such as move copy body in order to rotate it around an axis and duplicate it because what you are looking at right now what I'm doing is only half of the segment that needs to be patterned over here in order to be able to rotate it around an axis first I created an axis on that plane then I mirrored it then I was able to rotate it around an axis now I need to do some measurement because the next step would be patterning and when you want a pattern first of all you need a direction so I used the center line for it and I needed the distance I measured the distance in advance so I was able to pattern it what I did not take into account was the fact that I'm actually not patterning my body either in the X y or z direction rather i'm moving it in the x and y direction which later on proved challenging and that was my first mistake but that was not that big of a deal so i continued by patterning with half distance to create the next segment now what's left to do for this duplicated part is to move it up until it reaches the top of the other chain and you take both and start patterning so this sounds easy enough so look at this currently i'm just figuring out a way to pattern it both in the X and Y direction and the pattern was not the best option I tried to move copy body but turned out you need to have a exact coordinate in order to place it in the right rotation you cannot just select a line for the move copy body unlike in the pattern so I decided okay you know what let's go with the move copy body I just measure X and Y and I move it that way look at this I'm just adjusting it step by step optically until it looks satisfying then i click ok fine the first two segments are locked and woven into each other but it doesn't end there because i'm gonna have to use linear pattern again and i realized i cannot do that both in the x and y direction it would be much more difficult so i rolled back up the line and started creating an axis on the first plane in order to rotate the whole component 45 degrees up so I will be able to pattern the first segment in the X direction, the second one in the Y direction. So by the time I go ahead and start using my third linear pattern, everything is set and I can just pattern everything in the Y direction clearly. And all I need to define would be just a simple numerical figure. All right. So look at this. Everything is patterned in the X direction and now I'm measuring it. I'm moving it in the y direction until it looks good now since I used linear pattern I created one extra copy which I don't need now I have to go use delete body to get rid of it and at this point all I have to do is to create more number of instances in order to create my chain but that was one way to do it now at this point I am going to show you my second approach which proved way easier all I did was to create this volume in the middle and this plane that cuts it in half. I used intersection curve to create curves where these two intersect, went on to trim all I needed 
and delete the rest. So this is all I want for my pattern and I used the simple swept bus and created my segment. And after that everything was easy, all I had to do was to do the second and third pattern and boom, I had my fence chest. Now it gets me to this point. I'm using key shot at this point and you can take a look at the time on the bottom right corner of my screen how long it took to load this component into Keyshot using my 4 core PC. It took me a couple of minutes. Now I'm gonna go ahead and speed up the video to 400% because otherwise it would take a very long time. So from this point on I'm gonna increase the speed to 1000% as you can see. I'm gonna apply a material to the fence. I'm gonna change this color to something purple. It's shiny material. I think I picked zinc and rendering took exactly 30 seconds. Now, to compare my results, I'm gonna go to wagon.io. I have already created an account and I have access to their Apollo package. They offer a virtual computer with different packages and they charge you $8 a month for the virtual computer and depending on how many cores and what kind of graphic card you need or how, many, how much RAM, you will pay an extra on top of that. So I have the Apollo with 32 cores and two 8 gigabytes of GPU and I'm gonna test the same component that I used in the Keyshot on my computer to see how much it would take on a 32 core computer to render the same thing. Now I'm gonna download a trial version of Keyshot over here. It would take a couple of minutes to do this on their virtual computer because obviously it doesn't come up with every software you would need. So I just install Keyshot and at some point when I'm ready, I'm gonna load the component into Keyshot. It took me exactly one minute to load the component in compared to two and a half minutes that it took my computer to load. Then I apply the same material, same colors and same background and by the time I'm gonna go ahead and maximize the rendering window, I noticed that the rendering is already at 100%. It was like way faster. Look, again, render, and this time I took glass because it takes longer for glass to render. Just ignore the watermark from Keyshot. It's the same results of rendering and it's way faster. So if you're working on heavy duty projects such as CFD, FEA, or heavy renderings, it would be beneficial for you to use a much stronger computer to save enormous amount of time. If you are already a member of my SOLIDWORKS course pro, the course that I created for SOLIDWORKS beginners, you can go there and I will send you a link that will grant you one month of free access to whatever package you want plus 10 gigabytes of storage storage. If you are not a member, I'm gonna work on that package and create another deal for my YouTube viewers to give you a better deal if you're interested. I don't know if you're interested or not, so if you are, please go ahead and leave your comment down below this video and let me know.